Check this out. We have a simple web application that allows us to create new notes. If we create a new note, we can set up the title and we can also write some HTML. And also once we are finished, we can click save and also share that with any of the users who use this platform as well, or even if they don't even have an account. If we take a look at the backend code of this web application, we can see that it uses a sanitized HTML function, which basically takes an string of the raw HTML and then it uses bleach to clear everything, including the tags, the attributes, as well as the protocols and comments too. If we take a look at the allowed tags, we can see that these are the allowed tags, so nothing suspicious, allowed attributes, nothing suspicious, and allowed protocols, so nothing suspicious. But would you believe me that if there is a still critical vulnerability on this website that allows us to steal any account we want to in just a one click? Even though this is just an HTML injection, today I'll show you why hackers, personally me, love HTML injections and why, can they, why they can be so tricky and so unpredictable. Let's go with the video. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel. We're trying to hit 1,000 by the end of the year. So if you could do that, then that would be really helpful. Also, check out my game hacking course, which includes some of the example cheats, as well as my book bounty course, which also gives you Avino forever. And by the way, I have to tell you, Avino is under maintenance at this moment, so it's going to be back up very soon. So today's video will be more about HTML injections and why they can be really, and I mean really tricky to be predicted. So let's create a new note and let's see what we can actually do. As we've seen from the back end, we can set the title and the title doesn't actually contain any of the HTML. As if we take a look at the view note, the note title is being passed and parsed as a string. So it cannot be treated as HTML. However, the note content has this, has this symbol and it's called safe, meaning that this will be rendered as HTML. This is completely safe and everything else will be stripped. Okay, uh, now that we actually understand that, you know that the, the note title doesn't have to do with any of this, but let's create a note and let's try to do a script. You know that that is prohibited, but let's still try it to see if it maybe somehow works, but I'll show you what actually has to happen. And as you can see, it's currently empty. So we can create a note, but we cannot use script. And the tags that we can use are A, B, strong, and the some of the like block quote code pre HR, H1, H2, H3, small, and then form, and then input. These are actually very, very important. And without the back end, you would have to actually go ahead and guess them. But as of now, none of these actual tags can contain JavaScript code within them, at least not within like their content, but within the attribute, each and every one of them can. So let's actually move on to the attributes. The anchor tag can contain href, title, and rel. The href could contain JavaScript, but as you can see from the allowed protocols, the only protocols which are allowed within the href are HTTP, HTTPS, mail to, and tell. So no JavaScript protocol there. We can also see that there is a form which allows action and target. However, none of these actually could work either as you know, they're prohibited here as well. So you can't put JavaScript in the form and input fields have name, hidden type and value. Okay, so as of now, there's no way to execute JavaScript code. However, there is a few things we actually have to take into the consideration. Maybe there is a code, maybe there is a vulnerable code within the application that allows us to actually just do that. So it can be either two of these options. Maybe there is a bug within the sanitize HTML function that allows us still to escape it, or there is a general misinterpretation within these attributes and we can still execute code. But I found both of them unlikely, as you can read by the code, it's being actually done by a plugin or a module bleach, and it, it's super easy to use. It just takes your raw HTML, and it does allow tags, attributes, protocols, etc. So it's clean. But you might have noticed that there are forms, as well as input fields, which are allowed. And let me show you what can happen now. See, we can create an input field, for example, a form. Uh, let's take an action. So action, and let's put this right over here. Actually, let's create a new request bin. So create a new request bin, and we can use that request bin now. So copy it, and it's waiting for events. Okay, so let's put that there. And um, I don't know, let's go to close the form. Let's create an input field now. 
So what I've done right now is I created a form which will take the user right over here with a get method and it will send them the input name. It will send them like your name and once you click this button. So let's click save and there is our input field and it tells you submit your name. So you can enter like my name is actually dead. So let's go with dead and submit your name. And as you can see, it takes you to this pipe, pipe dream like request bin. And over here in the events, we can see that we actually did receive it. So that is pretty cool. But this is not a vulnerability. We need to find a vulnerability here. And what a great way to do it is to actually just go back. And what if we rename the name to username and click save? Okay, so that works. But let's create another input field. So let's create another input field right below this one. And let's name it password. Okay, maybe this will work. So let's click save. Interesting. So they're both currently empty. But let's give them a type. Let's call this type because based on the back end you can see that it actually allows type so let's give it a type let's call it text and let's give the password a type password let's just see what will happen oh so would you look at that it autofills both of these input fields chrome will autofill them okay so that's pretty interesting so let's actually now go back here let's create another input field maybe or maybe no input field at all let's just click let's just make a button called click me for a surprise okay and let's both set both of these input fields to hidden because we can see that that is actually allowed that attribute is allowed on the back end as you can see hidden so let's create that or save it and would you look at that now we just have a click me for surprise button no input fields However, let's actually take pay close attention to what happens here. So let me actually just get it out and let me put it side by side for you to check that out. So let me shrink this as well. Okay, as soon as I click this, so let's take a look at the event. Oh, would you look at that? Show new event. And there is a new event. So let me actually expand this again. Look at that. That is my IP, so that's nothing to be worried about. It's dynamic, so don't worry. And there is username, dead, password, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we just clicked a button on a website, and it allowed us to get the password from the user. Pretty interesting. However, the password was nowhere to be seen, yet the username wasn't. And what happened is, if you have your password stored on the Chrome, it will autofill them in these fields. So we can now actually log in and verify if we log out and go to login, you can see that it does exist, both the username and the password. And it is one, two, three, four. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Even HTML injections can be pretty bad. And hopefully you learned something from today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe, comment down below what you think about it. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.